Let's go to one another. Learn to live together as brothers and sisters. Without togetherness, we won't have a peace of mind. Hey, you there, hear me out. The Dr. Panam Show is a thought-provoking and stimulating talk show that brings topics of social, political, and societal significance to the national discourse for public scrutiny. We critically analyze and dive deep into issues that count most for or against our survivability as a people. We right the wrong with the exchange of ideas through dialogue, not confrontation, so as to make the world an honest and better place for us all. The Dakwana Show, which was officially launched on the 19th of April 2019, has over the years brought a high degree of professionalism coupled with accurate, balanced, and credible dissemination of news and information through its live Facebook broadcast. Amongst the hundreds of talk shows which broadcast via Facebook Live, Within the Librarian community, the Dakwana Show can boast of being one of the best platforms, if not the best, in soliciting the ideas of every well-meaning Liberian from across the political divide. The premier program is utilized as a conduit to promote peace, reconciliation, and national unity amongst all Liberians to the fullest. It gives the opportunity for all to exchange ideas and opinions for the better good of the motherland. As many can admit on the Dakwana show, nothing else but the matters that count most in Liberia are discussed without fear or favor, void of personal attack. The Dakwana show is everything Liberia and Liberian related. We are on the side of the truth. This is the national discourse. Join Dakwana Utent Nicholas Smith live and direct from on top of the world via Dakwana 24 News and Television and talk it out. Have a peace of all. Changes all we need to make you stand. It's to live by and have a peace of all. Sweet, I 
me out. The Dark Panam Show is a thought-provoking and stimulating talk show that brings topics of social, political, and societal significance to the national discourse for public scrutiny. We critically analyze and dive deep into issues that count most for or against our survivability as a people. We right the wrong with the exchange of ideas through dialogue, not confrontation, so as to make the world an honest and better place for us all. The Dakwana Show, which was officially launched on the 19th of April 2019, has over the years brought a high degree of professionalism coupled with accurate, balanced, and credible dissemination of news and information through its live Facebook broadcast. Amongst the hundreds of talk shows which broadcast via Facebook Live within the Liberian community, the Dakwana Show can boast of being one of the best platforms, if not the best, in soliciting the ideas of every well-meaning Liberian from across the political divide. The premier program is utilized as a conduit to promote peace, reconciliation, and national unity amongst all Liberians to the fullest. It gives the opportunity for all to exchange ideas and opinions for the better good of the motherland. As many can admit on the Dakwana show, nothing else but the matters that count most in Liberia are discussed without fear or favor, void of personal attack. The Dakwana show is everything Liberia and Liberian related. We are on the side of the truth. This is the national discourse. Join Dakwana Utent Nicholas Smith live and direct from on top of the world via Dakwana 24 News and Television and talk it out. Have a piece of home. Change is all we need to make a stand. Let's unify and have a piece of home.
I'm also a blessing, a blessing, welcome, welcome to all the guys joining the broadcast. Wherever you are, however you are following, I'm also a good big vibe with you on the nation to your platform. Welcome to the Dakana Show. This is the nation's to your platform where we discuss the issues that matter most to Liberia. Thank you for being with me on another edition of the Dakana Show. I'm excited to be back with you. Wherever you are, however you are following me, I'm also welcome to the broadcast. The Dakota Show is a time for booking and stimulating talk shows that discuss the topic of national Americans. On the Dakota Show, we agree to disagree with dialogue and not confrontation. On the Dakota Show, we seek to make Liberia an entire world a wholesome social society for all of us. Also, welcome to the broadcast. The Dakota Show is everything Nigeria and Nigerian related. We focus more on the growth and development of our common denominator, our common patrimony, Nigeria. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for joining. Tell our friends and your father friends, share the life. Let's do it together. Today's edition of the Dakota Show promises to be magnificent, fascinating, and splendid. Welcome to the broadcast. Wherever you are, however you are following. Thank you for being with me on another edition of the Dakota Show. I am your one and only, the Indy Father Table Test Education, Dakota. And I'm broadcasting the youth on top of the world. Yeah, Dakota to the full news of the show. I want to say welcome. Please help us share this live. Help us share the live so that we can afford. Others the opportunity to come here and let's discuss the issues that matter most to the BEO. Welcome to the broadcast. Tell our friends that invite a friend. This is the Dakana Show, your one-stop shop for accurate, balanced, and terrible news and information. We have a lot of things to talk about today. I guess you guys saw the earlier post that we did so as to have you a breast with all of the things that we'll be discussing. Once you're welcome, once again, thank you for joining. We appreciate you guys. That's what we refer to you as our cherishable audience, our cherishable listeners, viewers. Once again, welcome to the broadcast. Wherever you are, however you are following, are you following from Australia or Africa? Are you, are you following from Europe, North America, South America? Where are you following from? Wherever you are following from, are you following from Asia, the Middle East, the South East? Welcome to the broadcast. Tell a friend that you brought a friend. Want to say we're excited to be back with you on the back of show. Share the live. Tell a friend that you brought a friend. Let's do it together. This is the Dakota Show, the nation's premier platform, where we discuss everything like media and the real media, focusing more on the growth. And the development of our common denominator, our common party money, like the real. Of 133 years of one party system, it is the time that the Liberian people will vote and choose their own leader. So let us all celebrate. A peaceful election. October 10, 2023 of this year. October 10 of this year, 2023. We will be, Liberians will be going to the polls. So you led a new president. Perhaps after October 10, we will have, we will have a re-elected president or a new president. Welcome to the broadcast. Hey, you there? Hear me out. 
The Doug Farnham Show is a thought-provoking and stimulating talk show that brings topics of social, political, and societal significance to the national discourse for public scrutiny. We critically analyze and dive deep into issues that count most for or against our survivability as a people. We right the wrong with the exchange of ideas through dialogue, not confrontation, so as to make the world an honest and better place for us all. The Dakwana Show, which was officially launched on the 19th of April 2019, has over the years brought a high degree of professionalism coupled with accurate, balanced, and credible dissemination of news and information through its live Facebook broadcast. Amongst the hundreds of talk shows which broadcast via Facebook Live within the Librarian community, the Dakwana Show can boast of being one of the best platforms, if not the best, in soliciting the ideas of every well-meaning Liberian from across the political divide. The premier program is utilized as a conduit to promote peace, reconciliation, and national unity amongst all Liberians to the fullest. It gives the opportunity for all to exchange ideas and opinions for the better good of the motherland. As many can admit on the Dakwana show, nothing else but the matters that count most in Liberia are discussed without fear or favor, void of personal attack. The Dakwana show is everything Liberia and Liberian related. We are on the side of the truth. This is the national discourse. Join Dakwana Utent Nicholas Smith live and direct from on top of the world via Dakwana 24 News and Television and talk it out. Someone said thank you. Thank you for joining me on another edition of the Dakwana Show. I'm excited to be back with you on the nation's premier platform where we discuss the issues that matter most to the bureau. This is your one-stop shop for accurate, balanced, and credible news and information. I'm excited to be back with you on the nation's premier platform where we focus on the growth and development of our common denominator, our common patrimony, Liberia. I want to say thank you for joining. Share the live. Tell a friend to invite a friend. If you are if you are celebrating a birthday, a wedding, or whatever the celebration may be, I want to say happy celebration to you. All of you guys for having the broadcast. Today is the birthday of the the, the wife of Mr. Franklin Komoya. Uh, Madam Jaconti Komoya celebrates her birthday today. And also a media colleague of mine also celebrates his birthday. Today, uh, J. Yeke F. Queda also celebrates his birthday today. I want to say welcome to you guys. Thank you for joining. Help us share this live. Tell a friend to invite a friend. We have a lot of things to talk about. Today's editions of the Dakana Show promises to be magnificent, fascinating, and splendid. I guess most of you you are already in the know of all of the things that we'll be talking about because we did an earlier post today. And if, if you even look in the description, the description of this video, of this live, of this broadcast, you will definitely see all of the talking points. So we want to say welcome to the broadcast. We have a lot of things to talk about and we'll be speaking to the issues. Share the live. Tell a friend to invite a friend. The more we share, the more we, we, we will get more people to come on. So before we go into the discussion, we want to take this break. We want to take this musical break, and then we come back and go into the discussion. Let me try to get this music. Don't put me in a situation I can't handle. Situation I can't handle. Don't do it to me. Oh, 
this in the fair life is this one day. Now when I wear bad thing, we not experience it. We know all of your city, I can talk inside because we know all of your now for the inside. When I, what you want to tell her now? When you airport a job, it will change your life. After telling her to take all it, and you get gas, you're right, you put a thing on it. Oh, we know you won't get blood. We know you won't no love. All the men and I push you near you. And, and you see how they fool you. We in a situation, I can't handle it. Okay, 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 okay. So I want to say welcome back. Thank you for joining me on the broadcast. Please help us share this live. Tell a friend to invite a friend. We have a lot of things to talk about. And we will be going into the discussion. I want to say thank you all for joining the broadcast. We are, we are highly appreciative of you being with us on the Dakwana Show. I want to say welcome to the broadcast. So we have a lot of things to talk about. We, we, we are about to rumble into the discussion. So we want you guys to please help us share this live. Tell a friend to invite a friend. Someone say welcome. Welcome. So let's try to, let's try to go into the discussion. I want to welcome you. Want to welcome all of you guys. Tell a friend to invite a friend. Welcome. Welcome and welcome. Okay. So, so let's go now to our talking points. Continue to share the live. And we trying to go to our notes. So as to be exact when it comes to the talking points. Time to share the live. Tell a friend to invite a friend.
so the first <clears throat> the first talking point on our agenda here today is all about the census so let's let's go to the, the discussion of the census So with, with support, with support from the Liberian government and international partners, including the World Bank, Sweden, UNFPA, Irish Aid, ECOWAS, USAID, and Ghana, The Ladira Institute for Statistic and Geo Information Service Services Ledgers Wednesday released the provisional results of the national population and housing 2022 census 14 putting the Liberian population at 5.248, 600, 621 people. So we may we will say so far the provisional result is that the based on this the the sensor that was done we we can say that the provision for now we can say that we have at least 5.2 million people even though this is a provisional result we expect to get the final result in may the results have been further accepted by all international partners who described it as one of the best censuses ever. But some Liberians, including opposition political parties, believe they're contrary. So they are disagreeing. Even though the international community is saying that the, all of the partners, all of those people that put money into the process, they 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 saying that the sensor was properly done is the best sensor ever in the history first ever digital digital uh, uh last sensors but like some Liberians and most especially folks within the opposition political parties they are saying the other way they saying that they don't think that the census was done properly they don't think that the census was a success. They believe that the census was a failure. They believe that the census was a big failure. Pointing out all the irregularities that engulfed the start of the process. Now that the preliminary sensor results have been so that is seen as provisional, the provisional. Now that the preliminary or provisional, but provision, provisional sensor results have been made public and given all the disagreement. Where do we stand as a nation? Can the censor result be relied upon? So that's the question I'm asking. Now, we all know the entire census process. We saw that before the census could take place, there were a lot of claims and counterclaims. We saw 
officials of ledges going back and forth as it relates to the process, the preparation leading to the census. There were allegations made by some officials of ledges that some of the guys are ledges, they were involved with corruption to the highest level. Minister Samuel Tuer, who is the chairman of the board of ledges, appeared on several media outlets talking about the census process. L.G. Williams, who was the deputy director for statistics at ledges, came up and embraced a red flag. He said that the censor was going to be a fraud. The censors were not going to be accepted internationally. It is not done by the international best standard of practice. So he, he, he accused the director general, the deputy, the director general, or that, uh, uh, I think, uh, Francis Red or something. One Francis Red, he also, uh, Lawrence George, he said Lawrence George, Wilmer Smith, in order to, he accused him of being involved with corruption at ledges. So he said that from the way things were proceeding at ledges, the census was not going to be a success. And also, President Weir came out and dismissed Wilmer Smith, who was the acting Director General of Ledges. He was dismissed by President Weir some part of last year, and also Ellis, uh, 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 Ellis Williams, G. Ellis Williams, was also dismissed by President Weir. So there have always been Rick Monroe at Ledges. We saw enumerators across the country protesting, protesting for salaries, pro protesting for their pay. So it was at the beginning of the census, it was not well organized. The whole process leading to the census was a big mess. There were, there were confusion. There were there were claims and counterclaims. There were tussle and hustle surrounding the entire process. Even when the day that the census was launched to get started, when the census was launched to get started, we saw that it entered into a big mess, a big confusion. Many people across the country said that. They were recounted on the first day of the census. So there were a lot of things. We all know what happened last year from the, 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 the how you call it, the, 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 from the, the beginning of the process. Now, the vice president of the Republic of Liberia, Her Excellency, Chief Tato Jua, Chief Swakoko, Chief Ne Swakoko, Dada Jua Howard Taylor intervened and she appeared on a local talk show and said that there have been a lot of challenges surrounding the census, but as a government and as a people, Working along with the partners, along uh, 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 and along with leaders, they were doing everything in their power. They were doing everything in their power to make sure that the census be a success. And before the census could have started, there have been, there have been a lot of postponement. The legislature postponed the time of the census over three different times. Three different times. And in fact, According to the Constitution of the Republic of Liberia, census should be done within every 10 years. The last time we did census, apart from this one, it was what? 2008. So another round of census should have been done in 2018. But the government said that due to harsh 
economic crisis the government was faced with, they couldn't honor right the cause to be able to carry out the census. So 2018, the census wasn't done. 2019, it wasn't done. 2020, it wasn't done. 2021, it wasn't done. And 2022, it started with a lot of challenges. But the vice president was able to step up to her game. She was designated by the president to, to be able to regulate the entire process. And at the end of the day, today, we have a provisional result. We have a provisional result. When I listened to the program the last time, I listened to all of the partners. They were there, all of their representatives were there, and we heard them speak. They classified the entire census to be a success. Yes, they admitted to the challenges from the beginning. They admitted to all the challenges from the beginning. They admitted to it. But they said they were all the built on the challenges, and today the census was a success. They describe it as one of the best census ever in the history. I listened to the World Bank representative. I listened to the USAID representative. Uh, representative. I also listened to UNFPA representative. I listened to the United Nations representative. I listened to all the partners. Even our, even, even, even the local partners, the, 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 the National Tra Traditional Council of Chief and Elders are listening to the Labra Council of Churches, the Imam Council of Liberia, are listening to the Federation of Liberian Youth, and etc. Judy Andy, Crusader for Peace, and the rest of the folks, they all said they admitted to the challenges the face from the beginning, the onset, but they said that they were able to put all the necessary mechanics into place, put all the necessary mo uh, mo modality, modality into place, and today they said the center was a success. I listened to Lauren Josh, who is the acting director general of Legis, the Labrador Statistic and Geo Information Services. He also talked about the challenges. So all of them, they, they, all of them, they admitted to the challenges. But they said because of those challenges, they were able to build, on, build upon those challenges and they were able to, to step up there again. Today, they have a census coming up. The provisional results saying that the census is 5.2 million. And one of the things that I understand so far that the 2008 census said that the booming population was 60% in the country. But today, this new census result is saying that the male is more than the woman. The male population is 50 plus percent, while the woman population is 40 plus percent. So it means that the men have overgrown. <laughs> yeah, we have more men in Liberia as per the provisional result. We have more men in Liberia than women. But while the international partners and the government and all of its collaborators are saying that this census was successful. They are all celebrating the successful conduct of the census. But some Liberians are saying that the census was a failure. And most especially political actors, folks from the opposition political parties, folks, political leaders from those parties, they are speaking out. They are saying that the census was a, there was a failure. Many Liberians are saying that they were recounted. So how will the international partner come out and say that this censor it was is, is a success? But then people are complaining that they were recounted. They were recounted. They are saying that they were recounted. They are saying that the entire process leading to the censor was a disaster. It was a total disaster. Because we saw even people, there were, there were reported incidents where some of those numerators, they were caught selling the tablet. The tablet that, that, were, that, was, that was donated or that was borrowed to the Bureau of Ghana, our sister, our sister Republic of Ghana. They said some librarians, they were caught, those enumerators, they were caught selling the tablet. 
And some of them said that the reason they gave us is that they were paid and they needed food to eat, so they needed money to, <laughs> and, you know, the source of the tablet. We also saw enumerators threatening, seizing the material until they, are, until they could be paid. So, but those are the challenges that they spoke about. But I don't know. The international partners who pump in 50 to 60% of the money, they are saying that they trust the process, the process was fair, the process was a success. But then now, some of us were saying, I know. The whole process surrounding the sensor is a failure. Only because of those uh, 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 challenges that happen from the onset of the process. So, who should we believe? What do you guys think? I'm not the one to pass judgment in the death. Because if you ask me, I will want to pay attention more to the international partners. Because they put in their money, they have people on the ground observing the process. This thing, this thing uh, has to do with the United States Embassy, the European Union, the United Nations, all of those people, they all participated into this process. And if they all can say that it was a success, then I will ask myself, who am I to disagree? Because they, are, they have told us that this, this census meet international standard. This, this census, 2022 census that was that was provisional results that were released said that it meets international standard. But then we, if you look at it from the other angle, what they also want to disagree with me is that that matter, you are getting it all wrong because the fact of the matter here is that Liberians who were in the country, Liberians are saying that they were recounted. They were recounted. People didn't visit them. So how will you do a census and you don't count people in the country? You don't reach to them. A lot of people are saying that they were recounted. Or more say about dark manner, people may just be playing politics. You know, we are in a political, yeah, they want to make this weird administration look bad. And, you know, they try to, to tarnish the image of the government. But the father of the matter, yeah, everybody was counted. But I don't know if all of those people will be telling lies. Because there are a lot of people who said that, who came up and said, oh, we were counted. The entire censor we didn't see nobody. But I spoke to a few friends who told me that they were counted. Yeah, I spoke to a few friends. But some people are saying that they were counted. So where do we stand? Where do we stand? Where do we stand as it relates to the censor? Because the international partners, they are the ones who are working along. They are the ones who are working along with the government. So if they can say it's, it, it was a success, then why would we want to reject what they are saying? I'm not saying that they cannot be wrong. They can be wrong, but the fact of the matter here is that they will not pump in their money. Yeah, we all know there was a lot of corruption. Yeah, we all saw it. LACC inducted some of those official alleges. They inducted them. The government failed to or refused to prosecute them. But does that make it not to be a successful census? People are already questioning it. I also saw one of the popular things, one of the popular uh, uh, part of the census I saw on the social media, it was the Lebanese. They said the Lebanese is, I think, uh, uh, 700 and something in the country. People are questioning that. They're saying that Lebanese are more in the country. How would the Lebanese be 700, 700 plus people in the country? People are saying that. It's not true. People are also saying that they believe that women, women are still in the majority in Liberia. But one thing we should also understand, this is a professional result. This is a provisional result. This, this result is not the final result. The final result will be coming on May. It will be coming on May. So, where do we stand? 
Because definitely the international community, they have said that the census emit or it met international standard. The census met international standard and they approved it. Definitely, the rest of the world will accept that sense of result. If they were going to question it, if the international partners were going to question it, then. But they are saying that it's a, it was a successful census and they also celebrated the success of the census. So I really don't know, aside from saying that the census was a failure, what else can the opposition political parties do? What else can those Liberians who were encountered do? One of the also the things that we also we also saw that bringing that of contention is that the southeast, the southeast, the southeast uh, uh, has grown in number. Grand crew has a huge number. <laughs> People are saying that they, they cannot trust that thing. Why the Southeast population will grow high and then other countries population grow low or, you know, a, a little bit, but not high like the Southeast. People, the Southeast people are saying that the Southeast is, is, is not populated. The Southeast is not populated. In fact, the, sub, the, sub, the Southeast <laughs> has been abandoned. So that's all the arguments there. But the power of the matter here is that international partners are saying that it was a success. They trust the figures, they trust the numbers. So what will the opposition do? What will other Liberians that were that, that claim not to be counter do? So those are some of the things that we can talk about. We can wrap our heads around it. And you can call in and have your say because this platform is always open to all. No matter your political leaning, no matter your political affiliation, the Dark Panel Show is a conduit to promote peace, reconciliation, and national unity amongst us all. So you are all invited to call in and have your say. If you like, you can disagree with me, you can agree with me. The number is there. Just look at the broadcast, you'll see the number to call. Now let's move on. We have we done with the census. Let's move on. Okay. Former TRC chairman. So the TRC is the Truth and Reconciliation Committee. The Truth and Reconciliation Committee, it came into being through an act within the Accra Comprehensive Peace Accord. That was in 2003. And then I think by, I think 2028, 20, the, the TRC was set up. So the former TRC head, the former chairman of the TRC and former TRC chair and head of the RJG. So the so the he also now he's the head of the RAG. No, RJG, not RAG, but RJG. International Justice Group. So the International Justice Group is headed by the former Truth and Reconciliation Chairman. And he's no one else but Jerome Verdier. Counselor Jerome Verdier. Jerome Vredia is accusing the mayor of Monrovia, the mayor of Monrovia, Jefferson Tamakoji, of being the mastermind of the 
attack on the resident of former Chief Justice Gloria Musu Scott. Gloria Musu Scott has since held lot of positions within the Liberian government. And one of those positions is Chief Justice. She served as Chief Justice under the regime of former President Charles Dakmana, former President Dakmana, Dr. Charles Gange Taylor. When Dr. Charles Gange Taylor was president of Liberia, Gora Musu Scott was the Chief Justice. She served as Chief Justice from 1997 up to 2003. Gora Musu Scott also served as, she was elected in 2006, she served as Senator of Maryland County. Is that Maryland County? I think so. She served, I think, either Maryland or Green Coop. But I think as this, she served as Senator for Maryland County. If I'm not correct, you'll correct me. Anybody get information, but I'll show it was Maryland. So that was the start of a new government. And at that time, it was the start of a new government because we had war and then we had interim government. So 2005, we were setting up a new government, a new republic. So what happened? What happened was that Liberians were asked to elect two senators. So when you go to vote, you will elect two senators on the ballot. So we were we were voting for junior and senior. So the highest person each each, each county will be the junior, and the second, the person who will come second, was elected as junior. And that they and they were voting for six years. But normally, they 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 ten they ten you they they they, they, they ten you for senators is nine years. But because we're starting a new government, so the junior senator went for six years. So former TRC chair and head of the RJG. Mr. Jerome Vredia, who is a counselor, told Spoon Talk that Mayor Jefferson Koji of Morovia is the mastermind behind the attack. He told Spoon, he told Spoon that. He told Spoon Talk that the, M the MCC deputy for operation, Vali Tala, Vali Tala on, on the orders of the law mayor, carry out the operation, says he got all the evidence in his possession. But speaking to the media, a day after the allegation was made, Mayor Jefferson Tamakoji, Mayor of Morovia, dismissed the allegation. He called the allegation false, deceptive, and not true, untrue. He described the allegation as a political coup. Do they smell his repetition in this election year? He also, he yeba also requests an independent investigation into the incident and said that he will subject himself to investigation if necessary. So now the question here is, how serious is Councillor Jerome Verdier in this in his allegation against Mayor Koji? 
Then the second question is, why is Mayor Koji always implicated in this kind of incident? Now the third question is, who should we blame for this? For this horrific crime against former Chief Justice Gloria Mususka. That caused the untimely death of her daughter. Now, firstly, we want to extend our deepest condolences to the family of our former Chief Justice Gloria Musu Scott. We understand that they, they get that there, there are some information that we get, we are getting is her daughter. But we are also getting some information that she was a granddaughter. Some other people say she was a foster daughter. Some other people say that that's a, that, that was her niece. However, however the information may be of the relationship between she and the late the, 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 or the teacher that grew up with this guy. However the information may be, we want to extend our deepest condolences. We know that it was an untimely and painful death. We know that the family is grieving. We know that the family is in pain. And we know that they are grieving. And we know that they are right now frustrated. But we cannot ask God why it happened. But we want to say our deepest condolences. Now, on two occasions, I listened to the media, I listened to the radio, and I listened to Chief Justice Gora Musu's card alarming that on two occasions, she had a uh, a new man visiting her yard carrying a robbery, a robbery. So she told the media, and I've also been informed that she also informed the justice minister so as to provide her some security protection. And I think that Chief Justice, former Chief Justice Gro Moses Card according to the law of the land, needed to be protected under the Constitution. She needed she need to be protected. So I really don't know why the police didn't come up to carry, to, to be able to protect her or the loss I and mean, investigation into the, the, into the claim that she made. According to what I learned, when she told the justice minister, he said he would see what to do. He said he will see what to do. And that is where I am somehow not happy. I think the, the, the government, this, the government is there to protect its people. The government is there to protect its people from harm. So how would this woman, who is a eminent state woman, who said as Chief Justice of the Republic of Liberia, this lady should be taken care of. This lady should be protected under the laws. So why would the police, why would the justice minister not act promptly? But they were able to go and, and they, they play, they play, I don't know if they played deaf ear to her complaint or what, because they never spoke. Chief Justice Graham Muzuska spoke on the media. And she also went ahead and met the justice minister. So why did the justice minister didn't act on her request? So why did the government renege on its responsibility? It's like the government renege because of this, what can I say, the sluggishness of the government. Today, we have a, 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 a loss of life. Most especially, we're talking about a very young woman, very young woman. Who who uh, 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 was a prospective graduate? So how how the government, the police sat there and allowed such a thing to happen? They didn't act right away when they when they when they formally justice informed them 
why they didn't act by the way what is too bad why they didn't act until now we you, they, you see what the, it has caused for us we have we have lost an innocent young girl very determined so i really don't know what was the cause I have the police press statement here. I also have the statement from the family. I have them here. I have them here. And I would like to read those releases so that we can understand what really went wrong. Should we blame the police or should we blame so much you just a girl with the sky? Because one of the arguments. One of the arguments that somebody made to me was, how would this woman who had been in government or working in government for many, many years, this lady who is uh, 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 currently serving as a lawyer in Liberia, why will she sit there and didn't protect herself? Why couldn't she hire security? Why couldn't she hire security to protect her? Why should it always be the government, the government, the government? Why? 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 So, the fact of the matter here is that should we blame Guru Musu Stan for much justice for not doing much to protect her, her, herself and her family? Or we should blame the government because the lady came up. She spoke. She spoke to the public, the press. She also went ahead and spoke to the Chief Justice. I also understand that she also served as Chief Justice. No, not Chief Justice. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, 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 she served, Gura Mususka served as the lawyer. She served as the lawyer of the Liberty Party Young Bikanga Law Enforces, the Liberty Party Musa Ability. Can we say that, can we allege that it is one of those people behind the attack? Should we say that, that they want to destroy evidence? But why there's so much killing in the country? Why there is so much stuff going on in the country? Now, with the discussions around this, while we are all grieving, we are all calling for justice to be served promptly so that this girl will rest in peace, so that her soul can be able to rest in peace. Why, why, we, why we all grieving? Former TRC. Chairman and now head of the International Justice Group, Mr. John Vodia, call on sponsor our sister Odette and said that the killing was the burglary, the armed robbery that took place at the home of former Chief Justice Gora Musu Stat. It was masterminded by Mayor Jefferson Koji to his deputy for operations. So I really don't know why will Mr. Jerome Vodia come out and make such a, a grieve allegation against Jefferson Koji. And not only Jefferson Koji, he also implicated the President Weir. Even though he didn't implicate President Weir based on this split, but he went and he faced food and he engaged. So, the fact of the matter here is that who is saying the truth? Jerome Vardia or Jawasi Koji? Jawasi Koji has come up. He's saying that the information provided by Jerome Vardia, former TRC chairman, is false misleading. He said it does not have no iota or true. He considered Jerome Vedder's statement to be a blatant lie. 
He said the allegation is not true. He said he didn't, he didn't masterman nothing. And that's it. I really don't know. And when Jerome Verde was speaking, he also accused the president. He accused the president of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency, Dr. George Manan Weir. He said President Weir was responsible for the disappearance of the three missing boys. He, that's, why he, that's why he also said. He said President Weir was responsible for the disappearance of the three missing boys. So, he said that, uh, oh, President, we are solemnized those boys before he could call out them, call out them to be DVD. He said, even though the boys beg, they beg, they beg, they beg for the, for the president to save them, President, we are said, no, he will not save them because if he saved them, they will go and run them off. They will say the things that he did to them. So the students, the students, the shooting, yeah, he got it. So, who is saying the truth here? Mayor Koji is calling for a prompt investigation, independent investigation. And he is saying that he will make sure, he will make sure that he make his, himself available. He will make sure that he will make himself available for the investigation. He called on the justice minister to do so. He said, enough is enough. It has come, it has come, it, it has come that the whole, how you call it, allegation level against him be put to an end. He also said that he contemplated on filing a lawsuit against Councillor Jerome Fredia for always being in a constant habit of accusing him making wild ass allegations against him. So he said that he has written and definitely he will make sure that the laws will take a court, justice will be said. Well, uh, Councilor Brother didn't provide any proof. He only said it as if he was there, as if he was on the scene, but we we didn't get no proof from him. When the when the panelists on that platform asked him for for the who for the for the, the how you call it everything that he been saying they should ask him for the proof or the evidence. He cannot produce it. He's saying that he will he got the evidence, he got the evidence when the knee arises, he will produce it at a court. Of competent jurisdiction. That's what he's saying. So people are saying that it is because of hate. This Jerome Vredia, Councillor Jerome Vredia, is he he's so obsessed with the CC government. So because of that, because of hate, he wrote what he wrote. He wrote what he wrote. No, not wrote, but he narrated. That Jefferson Koji is the master manner, his master manner, the entire attack. And in fact, he, he, he was angry because it's like the guy missed target. The, the little girl that was killed, the little girl that was killed was not the target. The target was the grandmother. So they said, according to information, that she, they were going there specifically to harm her. According to Jerry Vreda, he said they were going there to solemnize her. They were going there, intent was to solemnize her to death to, and then get all the documents that they wanted. But they didn't succeed because friends came in and tried to help her. First came in and tried to help her. She was able to escape it. One person got seriously injured or wounded. They are critically ill in hospital, but one person due to the multiple wounds. She gave her the ghost. So what is, who is saying the truth? 
who is standing up to Job? Is that Jerubedia is just trying to make us stories? Because on many occasions, this Jerubedia has come up and accused officials of government, accused people in the government, but he cannot produce any facts. Mr. Kimmel cannot produce any facts. He cannot. But the fact of the matter here is that <clears throat> we have cleaves and counter cleaves. Is that the government did it? Or is that Mr. Jim Brother is not saying the truth? So why do you make up the whole sack? I don't know. According to the, the police issue that on a release. But let me see if I can read them. Read this release. Let me see if I can read. To be fair. Let me see if I can read the release from the police and that of and that of the family of the family of former Chief Justice Kura Mususka. So let me read the police report first. So let me read the police on a report. Uh, press release. The number is there on the live. If you want to participate, you can call in. Now, let's go to it. For immediate release, who I'm robbed and killed. Former Chief Justice Gura Muzuskat, daughter, so who I robbed and killed one in former, who I robbed and killed one in former Chief Justice Gura Muzuskat. Whom? LMP suspect insider and robbery. So LMP suspect insider and robbery. So the police are saying that they suspect insider and robbery. So they're saying that they, there is not somebody from outside. There is somebody that is new. There is somebody that is new by the former. Chief Justice. Now let's go to let, let go to the release. Moreover, February 20, 2023, the Labrador National Police has begun investigation into the incident that took place at the Brewerville home of Former Chief Justice Gora Mususka on Wednesday night, leading to the death of one of her children. Madam Scott, who is who is now on the appropriate police protection reporter, some Days ago, in radio interview, that the family have experienced several attempts from suspected burglar to enter the home at night. This report led to an increase of police patrol in the area. Preliminary findings from the Wednesday night incident, which occur, which occur at nine thirty p.m.
as narrated by Manastat, revealed that a man was spotted in the in the coup. A man was spotted in the coup. She hired she hired to carry out some construction work at her resident remain hidden inside of the so the man was hidden inside he hid it inside after the work day so the man remain heading inside at the end of the work day while his friends while his colleagues retire from the day while his colleagues retire for the day the man who former chief justice scott said she has observed during the day of Looking somewhat strange, attack her family at night and kill one of her daughters when he was tackled. The preliminary investigation shows no evidence of the breaking. The police is currently in possession uh, of the police is currently in search of the suspected robber and urge the public to come forth with any information that will that will weigh its investigation. So this release was signed by the police spokesman Moses Carter. So they are telling us that they are this release is informing us that the suspected arm rubber was one of the contractors hired by former Chief Justice. Gora Mususka to do some work, to do some work, to do some work within her residence, with at her at her home. According to what the police is saying, that this one of those one of those guys, they didn't go. They they hid. This guy hid himself. This guy hid himself within the residence of Madam Scott, according to what Madam Scott said. And then when night when when the night came, night tele, according to what Madam Scott told the police, and then he started to attack. After he was attacking them, he was tackled. It was a tussle. It was a torso, a torso, because he was attacked, he was able to injure one and kill one. So that's what the police is saying. So the police is quoting Managora Muzustad. So now Managora Muzustad is saying something different. Jeru Vreda is also saying something different. Jeru Vreda is saying that it was a master manner by Javadin Koji. It was a guy called Vali Tale, 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 who the deputy for operation and MCC security, the deputy for MCC security operation, carry out the operation, they carry out the operation on the orders of Javadin Koji. 
So, Kurabu Zuska is informed the police that the person who did this armed robbery, the person who attacked them, he was one of those. He was one of those that was part of some guys that she contracted to carry us some work with in her house, with in her compound. And then at the end of the day, they, one of them went and hid himself, hid himself in to the compound. And then when night came, 9 30 p.m., according to her, then he started the attack. Because he, he, he met some resistance, he was able to injure one and then he was able to kill one person due to the resistance. He, he used a knife to stab them. So that's what she's saying. That's why, according to the police, now the police are saying that they are, in, they, are in, they are in search for the suspected, for the suspected uh, armed robber. They are in search for him and they are calling on the public to provide information to them. So now that go now and read the release also after the police issue their release is like the family is not in agreement to what the police said. So now they also issue their own release. So let me go and get their own release so as to balance it. So let me try to get it. So let's try to get it. Okay. So press release. For immediate release. Marvel Abro, February 25, 2023. Gloria. Maya Musu Scott, former Chief Justice of the Republic of Liberia, of the former Chief Justice of the Honorable Supreme Court of Liberia, and Chief Musu family first extend thanks and appreciation to the Almighty God. For such is his, for such is his command. For such is his command as we recorded in First Timothy, no First Thessalonians five eighteen, and the. Uh, People of Liberia for their massive shows of support, solidarity, and prayers. As a family, even in the West of time, we still remain grateful to God. Their family particularly appreciates the role of the Library media for flagging this matter from the very first and second attacks on us. With no action taken until the West befell us. Their family informs the public and the international community that the government the government was made the government was made doing let me get this thing okay the government was made aware the government was made aware. The government was made aware to the police depot in Morovia. And, and also Attorney General and Minister of Justice of the Republic of Liberia after the first, second, and even the 
Terror attack, we saw the Bruson, the, the Bruson murder of Charlotte, Charlotte Musu, a prospective graduate of the Stars University College. So the, the girl who died, her name was Shalo Musu. The staffing of Ellis Johnson, wounding of Gertrude, wounding of Gertrude, and attempt on the life of former Chief Justice Quiroz Musu Scott. If our family, for our family tower, in a state woman, in a state woman who have given herself to the service of the nation and people of Ladira. On Thursday, February 23rd, 2023, less than 24 hours after the assassination attack on us at our Broadview residence, the government through the Liberia National Police LMP issue a statement insinuating that the assassin might have been domestic worker only because they only because they have been higher electrician working on the house on that fateful day even though there were two initial attacks on the 8th and 9th of february 2013 two nights two nights in in a row which were reported to the police just clearly suggests to us that the police knew the facts even before conducting the investigation. Oh, wow. <laughs> they are trying to accuse the police here, you know. But anyway, let's go, let's move on. Let us make it clear that when these two previous attacks took place, There were no contractors, and interestingly, the attackers did not take any valuables. Instead, they searched every document they could lay hands on, giving us reason to believe that the attacks, which resulted into a death, of a promising young woman were also meant to recover some documents they proceed, perceive or believe we have in our possession. They also disable some, some system in her car which from all indication appear to have been another means of carrying out the criminal plan to make the attack seen as the burglary they took away a 25 kilo a 25 kg bag of rice as much as we can recall it is important to know that since the 
since the burger attack, since the brutal attack, gruesome murder and taking away former Chief Justice Scott's personal letter in from which again was reported to the police on Wednesday between 10 to 11 p.m. No arrests have been made. When the police arrived on the scene, they took away two private security officers and male family member of ours, Uncle Uncle Chumu, following, following the last two attacks, Uncle Chumu seeing that the government didn't leave didn't leave its fingers to provide any form of protection for the former chief justice and her family has decided to be spending the night with us to help keep watch on with the private security. So these three men, to the best of our knowledge, are still in police custody. On Friday, police spend several hours with our son. Godson Cody at our 16th Street residence saying that the police were taking statement from him after there are many hours of interview. We've got some and then that they asked the electrician contractor who have come to 16 screen to receive their pay to go along to the national police headquarters from our 16 screen resident. We are, however, inclined to believe had any other government officials previously been attacked twice in a lamp, government would have taken action to, ha to have avoid what happened to us. But as for the public to judge and other murder which have Happening in our country? Our family biggest question is what has former Chief Justice Scott done to worry all this? We from the call on the government to investigate this and other murder and bring the perpetrators to justice. We will not hesitate to, unless we will not hesitate to, we will not hesitate to enlist the help of the international community to the diplomatic mission to ensure that this is not swept under the carpet. We are also baffled by what seemed redundant, the deployment of police after we have been forced in a situation we can never forget. Even by both standards, the, the state or police have the duty to protect all citizens regardless of social status, social status, political, affiliation, belief, of religion. But conversely, the formerly, the formerly chief justice alarmed, alarmed the 
Jedi attack and threats in vain. The family remain ever grateful for the scores of citizens, friends and sympathizers, professional colleagues, organization and current and former official of government and diplomatic mission inside and outside of our borders who have visited, called, text or made public condemnation. So that's the family strong water statement. So this is a strong water statement issued by the family. But one of the things they didn't really, they didn't really reject what the police said. They didn't really reject it. They didn't say the police said what the police said that's not true. At no point in time did four months just the group Muzuska said that it was a contractor who attacked them. They didn't really say it. They wouldn't, what they are saying here is that the police, what the police is saying that the police is saying that they, this, there was a contractor. But then it's like the police, the police are fully aware of what happened for the other two attacks. What happened the other two times, the police is fully aware. Because if they if they can keep talking about the, the main one that happened, then it means that they're fully aware of the other one that happened. And they are just satisfied that the police, the government was not able to intervene. When they issued the first alarm, they issued the second alarm. The government did it come to the rescue of the family. Chief Justice Gora Muska and her family. I think it's sad. We know that the family they are agree. And we expect them to speak like the way they are speaking. We expect them to, 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 to blame the government. Because the government is the protector of all should be there to protect us all. The police is there to protect lives and property. The government is responsible to provide security for all its citizens. So the fact of the matter here is that if a, a eminent state woman who served our country for many years in self capacity could be on an attack the first alarm, she raised it. The second alarm, she raised it. At the end of the day, nothing could have been done. Nothing at all until the tear one happened that led to the loss of life, which is so disheartening. Which is so disheartening. So at the end of the day, all we can say here is that we are calling on the government to launch an independent investigation. The government should launch an independent investigation into what transpired. We need to know who is the cause for what happened. Who are those responsible for the attack? who are responsible for the killing of their innocent young woman. Liberia is a country of law. It's not a country of men. It's a country of law. So we should be there to exercise the law, no matter who is involved. We need to exercise the law to the fullest. I really don't care about what Jerry Freda is saying, because Jerry Freda has always been there has always come up and make claims that he cannot suspect yet. He, he has always accused Mayor Javati Kochi falsely. Until it can be proven that what he is saying is true, I really don't, I really don't care. But what I care for is the government should launch a prompt investigation involving independent 
committee to serve an independent investigatory committee need to be served to look at what happened. This is something serious. One may say these people they are after documents. One may say that the person responsible for the attack could be the people who the people from the Labour Party. So one who say say the guy from the Labour Party because these people. According to information, these guys they are not good, they, they, they didn't really been going there the first time, the second time, they didn't really go there for to take material things. They only went there to get documents. To get documents, even the, the last attack which took which led to the killing of the, the young the young female, they went and took her laptop in her food. They were they were after her life. So who is behind this? Who is behind this? If is if what Jeremy Vreda is saying is something for us to go back, let us know. We need to know. But people should not make politics out of this thing. This has nothing to do with politics. It's about time that we put politics aside and definitely stand with this family, this grieving family. This grieving family. This grieving family. We need to stand with this grieving family. We need to stand with this grieving family because the family, they are devastated. So we need to stand with them. So the government needs to step in. Lots of prompt, a prompt investigation. Set up an independent investigatory partner, a committee that will investigate. No, no. So, and we are also calling on former TRC chair Jeremy Verdia to come up with his investigation, his fundings. You cannot just make wacky allegation and you don't provide facts. You need to provide facts. You need to. You need to. If you are just still in this, is a Dakwana show. And we are discussing the issues that matter most of the year. The number to participate is, is there. You can call in and have your say. So that now we try to go to the So the other talking point. So Mayor Jabali Koji is saying that the, as the allegation level against him by Councillor Jeru Vredia is first Melini does not have any iota of truth in it. He said that it's a political plot to tarnish his high and reputation, more especially in this election year he's calling on the independent committee to be set up to launch to prompt into to prop into the investigation so let's go to the next talking point Mo Ali and Agostina Gray Baby Saga, a classic act of hypocrisy by Mo Ali. Why I do not owe him any apology? So we <laughs> we all know that during this week. The last week that just ended during during the course of last week, Mo Ali, friends of Mo Ali, the whole entire social media took. They went everything went virus on the social media that Mo Ali did a 
to a two DNA test between the between the 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 the, 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 the char. Between the child with the child between he and Agostina Gray. He did three DNA tests with that child, and the said, according to them, the said it proved negative that Mo Ali was not the father of the child and other things. But the father of the Malaya is that how authentic is that information? It is something that we can believe. It is something that we can go by. It is something that we can accept. This DNA, when it was being done, was it done in consent with Augustina Gray, the mother of the child, or Augustina Gray family? So how did he get to do this DNA test? According to what I've learned, because Mo Ali, because Mo Ali have a political ambition, he is contemplating on contesting in most of the country district number five for the representative seat. So he want to try to do everything within his power to erase. The whole incident that transpired between he and Agostina, where he was caught on tape asking her to abort a pregnancy. One of the reasons why we beat Omo Ali at that time, because he was heard in that video, which he had tested that it was him, not a video, but a voice recording, which he had tested that it was his voice manipulating arrogantly threatening this girl to take on this pregnancy in that recording Mo Ali they didn't say the pregnancy was not for him it is a god fairy too it's an honest shoe that Mo Ali as old as he is sexually harassed that little girl people are saying that yeah she's a woman and Christina gray is a woman she was 19 she was 20. but how will mo ali of all person all men who is pushing 50 between 45 to 50 years old man will go and try to have sex with such a, a young woman 1918, 1920, until to the extent that he pregnant her and he was trying to pressurize her to abort the pregnancy. At her displeasure, this girl was saying that she didn't want to do it, she didn't want to do it, and at the end of the day, Mo Ali kept pushing her and all of those things until it came to the public. People now are saying that, well, since Mo Ali have done the autopsy, the autopsy no DNA, <laughs> since Mo Ali has done DNA, three DNA, and is proving that he is not the father of the child, so we who beat on him at that time, we should apologize to him. And I'm saying, no, we will not apologize to Mo Ali. Mo Ali is a very wicked man. He's very evil. He he want he do everything in his power to destroy and damage this little girl. He trying to get a her by every means. He trying to clear his name through a criminal means, criminal and fraudulent way. How will you come out and say you did three DNA when the family is not even aware of you doing any DNA? How did you do the DNA? Because Mo Ali is a corn artist, since that girl gave birth, Mo Ali has always been keeping his distance. For him to even get the support, to support the baby, it was war. It was only after when he, when he, when he strategized that his plan, that's the time, I think a few months to the birthday or something like that, 
That's the time when he scratched out this plan. He pretended that it was start going around. He pretended to start going around to this family, going to the baby, taking his three guest children to the baby and making the people to be flexible with him. So the people try to be flexible. Oh, yeah, but this is his father. I think it's the father's right to take this baby, to take this child, you know, to come and visit the child. So at the end of the day, the people started opening up to him. What are you doing, Sarah, requesting for the baby to take the baby to his house and all the kind of things? They started, they, started, they started to trust him. But what, what, when that was happening, what Ali had a sinister motive. He had a sinister motive. And the sinister motive was to do DNA. According to the information, he did the first DNA and, you know, and one of one, one uh, I think I think I think there's a hospital. Uh, so there's a clinic. Somebody told me that it was Melly Melly Clinic. I don't know how true is it, but he did the first DNA. But I, I heard earlier on that there was, there's a there's a hospital in somewhere in Sinker, one of those muddy clinic in Sinker. So I don't know the the where that hospital is situated. I don't know if it's Melly or it's another place. But the father of the Malaya is done. He went on known to the people and did his DNA, this so-called DNA. When he did this so-called DNA, it proved that he was not the father of the child. He decided to go a bit further. That's the time he went and told the family that, oh, he, 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 he has a relative in the United States that wants to send for his children. And because he he loved the boss so dearly, and because the girls, because the girls have have all getting involved with the ball, and they have gotten so used to the ball, so he wants the ball to be included. And according to him, according to him, they needed to have done DNA to know why the children, why the boy is his, is his son. To just do DNA to know because that's a procedure according to him. So that's how come I don't know two what means and when it did a two additional DNA. But at the end of the day, more Ali issue the DNA result to his friends. And they all came on Facebook, started calling Agassina names, beating on people that are bullying her, people that are calling her names. People say I say all kind of thing about her, and you know because they say she's a liar. She was used politically. How? That's the thing I really don't understand. How would somebody say, "Oh, it was the girl trying to bring more down, politicians trying to use her"? How? This man saw this girl, and he has something to do with this girl, and we all heard him on tape. He didn't reject the pregnancy until he didn't reject it. All he, he was asking was for the pregnancy to be taken off. He said that the pregnancy should be taken off. That's what he was asking for. That's why he was calling. He was requesting for the pregnancy to be removed, to be abducted, which the girl resisted. That's what we beat on him for. But then after. The barrage of insults, the barrage of criticism on this girl, calling her knees and bullying and all those things, Mo Ali is to come up, issue a press release saying that, well, oh, I'm sorry for what happened. I should take the blame. I'm calling on the public to stop attacking Agostina, the baby. It has been 22, 22 months. There's a need for you to stop. And I will, I will adapt the child, and I will, I will bring the, I will, I will adapt the child and go far to the child and all that kind of thing. But I see it as being deceptive. I see it to be an act of hypocrisy on the part of Mo Ali, who provided the information to the public. It was Mo Ali, so it's like Mo Ali is telling us that he didn't want, he didn't want, he, he didn't want the people to be insulting in Agostina, to be criticizing Agostina, but. He provided information to the public. So why did you provide information? If, if, if that information ends in the global, why didn't you provide it? Why didn't you provide it 
No, not provide, but why didn't you keep it? Why didn't you reach out to the family so that you guys can settle in house? You should have why reach out to the family. I tell you, I'm going to be a good thing if you're going. I tell you, I tell you, got those results, those DNA results. You should have reached out to the family and let the family know that this is what I've gathered. How can we work this thing up? For me, I still love this boy. I want, I want to, I want, I want, I, I want to to adopt him. Why you couldn't say all those things? He didn't say nothing. He kept cool. He kept cool. Now, for you to come now, you after you you did the DNA, you got the result, you, you share it with your friends, and then they start to put it on, and then you come in and they say, Oh, you all start attacking Agostina. You think anybody will listen to you? Nobody will listen to you. I feel that the whole press release was a rubbish, it's a trash. That release issued by Moa is a rubbish, it's a trash. That's her level of deception, her level of hypocrisy on the part of Mo Ali. Because if you knew that you still love that child, you should have even done DNA according to according to you, did DNA. So I would say I would I would, I would, I would, I would believe that. You could have used DNA. And then you 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 refuse to go to the house and so forth. So, I will not apologize to Mo Ali. I don't think anyone else should apologize to him. I think I've got the information that the family has since, a Garcina Gray family has since disagreed with the report. They disagree with it. They said, as far as they know, Mo Ali is the biological father of their son, their daughter's son. So, more Ali promised to call me. And when more Ali call me, anytime, you guys are yes, I'll update you. I'll update you guys. But the father of the Malaya is that. Why would you want to why would you want to do that to a young woman? Nobody forced you to go there. You went there on your own. You are doing a high and seek. High and seek. Why? Why? So we will also will also will also call on the public. We are calling on the public not to take that serious. The only way that some of us will come out and say, "Oh yes," is true that the child is not for more Ali, except. A DNA that involves the entire family. If a DNA that involves the entire family is taking place, then if it come up, if that DNA come up, result come up, then it's not, it's not a child then. But for now, it's hard to believe what Mo Ali wrote. Mo Ali is also saying that they get a lot of politicians. How many politicians are getting friends with? Well, so that's it. Mo Ali is not a good guy. People that Mo Ali shouldn't be encouraged with in our society is wrong today and is wrong tomorrow. I will not apologize to Mo Ali. I think Mo Ali should be man enough. To support his baby. Everybody knows, everybody knows that the baby is his. Those DNA results need to be proven. I'm challenging more Ali to publish the DNA results so that we all can read it. I'm challenging him to publish it. He needs to publish the DNA results so that we all can analyze it. But if we cannot publish it, but you are able to pull the information out. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm disappointed. So we will keep an eye on the process. We hope that the Agostino Great family can come up, get the nice back in and support that the DNA be done. 
in a in in, in, their, in their person. If it's proven that it's not his child, then so be it. Then it will be just Augustina Gray now, who will be who we we all now will definitely engage. We will beat on her to see to show us who the actual father. But for now, with that DNA result that Mo Ali say he did three that it cannot be shown, it cannot be shown to us. It, it, you know, we cannot see it. But we will definitely, we definitely how you call it. So that's it for that one. And that go to the last one, the last talking point. The last but not the least. If you are just joining, this is the Dakana show. The number is on the screen if you want to call. So we ask for some of the things that we have spoken about. You are welcome to do so. We are open to criticism. We are open to disagreement. Disagreement. So you are welcome to call into the broadcast. The number is there. Look at the number on the screen and call in and have your say. That was the last one. Okay. Let's go to the last one. Dr. Francine Chinare Richardson. And outright betrayal. Dr. Francine Chinare Richardson. And outright betrayal. Why can she practice what she preaches? Is something actually going on deeper between she and Stanton Wittersport? Who is trying to blackmail that the first thing she reaches and what for? So that's that's the that's the question I'm asking here. Now we all saw that a few days ago, four panelists resigned from the spoon talk. Timony Josh, Benjamin Senvi, Henry P. Baden. And as well as Kev Hassan. And they said that they have some personal disagreements. And they were able to come up. They came up with that with, when they issued a press release, they didn't state. They, they, they personal disagreement, but they came out after they came out. They spoke on several media outlets talking about the reason why they decided to leave the platform, the resign from the platform. But one other thing that caught my attention that the Francine Chinore Richardson, who claimed to be highly educated, he's a doctor. This lady sits on a platform knowing fully aware of everything that has happened. She didn't protect her colleagues. She saw with everything that Stanton Witherspoon did to her colleagues, the humiliation, the, the rudeness against his friends who stood with him to build that platform. And this lady was brought into that platform with Timothy Josh. It was Timothy Joy who brought her, but she decided to be ungrateful to them, to him or them. Now, we all thought that they all were going to stand within one accord so as to engage the CEO to back off from the platform 
to disassociate himself from the platform so as to give him up more opportunity to focus on his indictment. Because as we all know, Stephen Witherspoon is a criminal defendant. He has been indicted and charged for wire fraud with, by the Federal Grand Jury of the United States of America. Now, according to what the guy said, when Azedo, it was alleged that Azedo beat on his girlfriend, that a genuine richesy led of a, a fight to get uh, to get uh, Azedo. I hope I didn't say Azed Jackson, but if I said that, I'm sorry, it's Azedo. Azedo, she did everything to make Azedo get off the platform. She said she was protecting the cause of women, and she cannot be sitting on the platform with Azedo, who has just committed a, 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 a domestic violence. Then, at the end of the day, then someone else will me to go there. No. You know, you, that the Francine, Francine Chinare Regency, you were there advocating for, for Stanton to take action on Acido. You didn't rest until action was taken, Acido was kicked off the platform. He got kicked off the platform because you said that you were you felt discomfort, you were displeased to be sitting on the platform with a man who has who has been allegedly accused of being of, of beating his girlfriend. So you 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 talk about you stood your ground. As was taking. Now, at the end of the day, today you are yet to take that action. You are yet to stand for a moral principle. You are yet to stand for the cause of the Labyrinth people. Every time you sit on that platform, you scream to be in the agent of the Labyrinth people. You know for the way that is a standard. It is a standard in and outside of Liberia that if you are indicted, accused of committing a crime, you can be whatever you are on top, whatever job you are involved with, you are asked to recuse yourself. You are you, you, you voluntarily step down to be able to give chance to the investigation. It happened with all the media entities, CNN, the Fox, and other people that was there. And then at the end of the day, they got to the point where they were accused of corruption or something to have done something wrong. And they step aside. So why are you not asking them to, to step aside? Why, when those guys decide to raise the red flag, raise the issue with Stanton, you kept mute. You didn't act. You do. You didn't stay with them. You allow you to be manipulated by Stanton. What is really between you and Stanton? Because we are getting a lot of information. It has been alleged. That Stanton Witherspoon and that the Francis General Richardson is into extra marital affair. The both of them, they are both married. That the that the Francis General Richardson is married to Abraham Richardson, and also Stanton is married to Lao. Lao is Stanton's wife. But we have, we have been getting information from the unreliable source that it has been, it, it has been alleged that Francine Chenoweth and Regency in Stanton, they are, in, they are involved in a relationship. So I really don't know. So I don't know why this lady is not taking the, the bold decision. Why is she still on the platform? You cling to to be there for the people. Every time you, that of Francis Chinaway, Richardson, appear over there, you talk about corruption, corruption, corruption. Even people who were only accused of being involved with corruption, you got beat on them. You got scored their names. You got called for their dismissal. But what happened to Stanton today? 
you sit with him on a platform where he has a questionable character. He was indicted by the federal grand jury, and then you sit there and protect him. You want to protect him? You cannot protect him. So we don't know the relationship. We don't know how true is the information that you and Stinton, you guys are into the extra marital affair. It is true that the regency, that the Francine regency, it is something these days in the, in the public, it has been there for a long time. And you know, 99% uh, of the rumors in Nigeria can be true. That the same way when the investigation was ongoing with Stinton, when people are talking across the street corner, then what happened? Stanton said, oh, lie. <clears throat> so, that the first generation richesy, that the first generation richesy, you need to take the bold step to the bold courage to recuse yourself on that platform. If you cannot recuse yourself on the platform, there's a need for you to ask Stanton to recuse yourself. I understand that I listened to Fusion Fargo the other day saying that on Tuesday, the CEO will be will be will be coming on the platform to to to, to make a, 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 a to, to make a, a statement, and I also saw some of the guys within his employer saying that beginning Tuesday he will be coming on the show to participate regularly. So what is the credibility of the platform? How will it be like? How will you have a criminal defendant sitting on a platform trying to critique or criticize? the Liberian people or the government. Ha! Huh. You think anybody will take him serious? You think anybody will take him serious if he does that? Eh? So, that's what it is. Dr. Richardson, Francine Chinaman Richardson spoke about somebody trying to blackmail her. And when, when the question was posed to, to the guys, Timony just and all of the guys said they have no reason to blackmail her. But what Timony just said was that when the situation occurred, he called on her, he because he was the one who brought her to the platform, he reached out to her, asked her to stand with them. He called on her to stand with them. And she refused. He also reached out to her husband, calling on her husband to ask the woman to stand with them. But both of them refuse. Both of them refuse. But that's why it is. I don't know. That the Regency feels comfortable sitting over there discussing corruption in Liberia, but they cannot discuss the corruption that the CEO of the plot of the network has been accused of. He has since been accused of wire fraud and he was inducted. He's now being prosecuted. So why can you not discuss it? And one of the things the guy said, they said that we said we will not go in, into the merit of the case, but we will discuss the subject. Stanton said, hell no. They also asked him to, to move himself on the, on the platform. He said, hell no. So he has Oh, he has all of the control on the show, on the platform. So, but today I see the ANC people, they are benefiting from the platform. Most of their folks on there with the regency, but they are not criticizing her. They are not calling her names. They are not comparing her. They are not asking her to take the right action. But if you are going to be other people, then the ANC people are going to be all over the place. Oh, what a place. That's deception. When we talk about deceptive politics, when we talk about hypocrisy, that's what we're talking about. So that's what we're talking about. Shetto, or, 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 or how you call it, that's a richer scene, pressing children with richer scene, sits on that platform, pretend that nothing is happening, happening. <sighs> but then she want us to hold, to take her serious. We want, she want us to take her serious. A woman should, 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 should be there to set a standard. You both are being in America for, for, for small. Don't you know that these things happen? Don't you know? You both, 
your ear and, 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 and however day you you woman you, you just trying to tarnish your reputation on there trying to make people question you more than the richest thing you guys are for comments so why can you stand for what comments believe in why are you still on the platform why are you trying to protect it is because of the alleged escrow marital relationship between you and stanton it is because of the alleged escrow marital relationship between you and stanton that's the reason why you stay on the platform as i also learned that stanton is trying to transfer the entire spoon network into her name so that she can handle it from him i don't know how true is that one but that's what we're hearing so we need to we need to reach out to that woman and ask her why she's not taking the, 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 the action that she needed she needed to take why is she still on that platform why she couldn't stand with her guys those guys been there protecting her those guys always been standing with her when she decide when she called for acid for 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 acid door to be removed they stood with her and he was removed so why she didn't stand with these other guys then this time around why she didn't stand with them today she's still on our platform and other kind of things so that's it i think is i think that the richest thing should come on and answer more questions she the last time she talked about somebody want to blame her we don't know for what for what 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 uh, 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 will make somebody that will want to blackmail her what will make them to so say they want to blackmail her it is something that they know that we don't know it is something that they know that we don't know so that the racist should complain she should, she should complain you cannot you cannot uh how you call it you cannot be talking about equity 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 that you don't have a clean hands if you talk about equity you should also come with a clean hands so that's it for that the richest and i'm still seeing people saying that well Stella is a good man we, we, we allow the law to take a course but the part of the matter here is that court state don't remain a criminal defendant we pray that he will be prosecuted to the letter if he's not guilty that's it he should prove himself not guilty but if he's guilty then that's it but the part of the matter is that every child like that any child that <laughs> not child per se but any any person like that should be you should be careful with them anybody who behaves in that form and manner anybody who behaves in that form and manner you should be careful with them you should be careful with people that that are facing children with richness this day she doesn't mean well for Liberia. People of Liberia should not take people to her serious. Stand on with a spoon. Got his got himself involved in what he's in today. So there's no way for us to come on here and be and feel sorry for him. We will not feel sorry for him. We will do the thing we can say. We 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 look into the process and see how it how it will play out. If he's guilty, so so shall it be. If he's not guilty, so shall it be. But I will not come on here to say I support him, to say I stand with him. No, I don't support criminals. I don't stand with criminals. Stand on with this one is a crim criminal, and so be it. 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 But it's so it's it, 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 it's so it's so shameful that, that the richest thing. Of all person will sit on that platform, act that like nothing is happening. She put her order, she 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 allowed Stanton to put Kev Hassan 
and the rest of the guys on the bus and so forth. That that platform is not credible. That will be in that will general registry should be ashamed of herself. A disgrace to the females of our country. You know that, you know the rules, you know the standard, you know how it is. When somebody is accused in America that you're in, you know what, what happened. They, 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 they excuse themselves for any job that they have. You, you know. So, that's what I have to say. As it relates to that one, that's what I have to say. That's what I have to say as it relates to that emergency. Refusal to leave the platform. That really refuse refusal to stand with the guys, the four guys who are calling for integrity, who are calling for the rebranding of the platform. That really refuse. So she's there. I don't know if she will be able to speak to if she will one day speak to the allegation that she and Stanton Willis was into. They are both into marital relationship, both of them. I really don't know. Today, I really don't know. So that's it. <clears throat> that's what I have to say. Those are all of the talking points that we have outlined on this edition of the Dakwana show. So if you guys want to call in, you can call in. If you want to participate, the number is on the screen. Call in and have your say. We appreciate if you can call in and have your say. We have said ours. It's time for you to say yours. So you can call in and have your say. The number is there. What do you make of the discussion? The discussion, the discussion been so challenging for me. Because, <laughs> you know, yeah, I think I said point that something I was you know miss I misspoke, you know, several times, but yeah, you know. I don't know why I'm, I was, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit sleepy. I, I, I did sleep. I did sleep. But I don't know why the sleep kept coming, but I tried to fight the sleep. So at certain point in time, if you heard me talking about something and you heard me saying something else, and then I caught myself, you know, <laughs> that's the sleep. That's what, that's what the sleep does. So you guys can call and have your say. I have, I have, I have, Elaborate on all the talking points is now for you to call in and have your say. So you call in now and maybe you want to disagree with me or you want to agree with me. Whichever way this platform is open to all to come here and have your say. So you can call in and have your say. I will stick around. See if I will get any of you guys to call in. So let me see if I can if I can recognize any of the folks. Those that are, that's, those are visible. Let me see if I can recognize you guys. And I I await your call. Lee Freeman Jr., welcome. Dosa, welcome. Prince S. Prince S. Power, welcome. Vivian Wheeler, welcome. Mr. Wilton Ketter, welcome. Putin Nacho Sada, welcome. Vera Marshall, welcome. Imaya Spain, welcome. Brandy, welcome. Wallace Journal, welcome. Victoria Michelle, welcome. Marco Divan, welcome. Alasha Gadaman, welcome. Honorable Gia King, welcome. Bella Pingma, welcome. 
I'm doing good, brother. Welcome. Prince B. Collier, welcome. So those are the folks I'm seeing here. So, so you can call in now and have your say. Let me stick around and see if I can wait. So you can call in and let's have a conversation. I was able to bring you all the talking points, even though I was on an attack by sleep. I was seriously on an attack by sleep, but I was able to fight through. And, you know, I was able to fight my way through the sleep. <laughs> and I was able to bring all of you guys to talk about. So if you, if you heard me, if I was in mid, I was, you know, if I were saying something different at a certain point in time, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this we got that one. I was sleeping. I was putting the sleep. <laughs> so, yeah, call in. Have a seat. Okay. Let me see if I get in a comment here from the other side. Samuel Flomo Jr. He's watching from Banga City, Bon County. Welcome. So far, so good, all of you guys, because we are broadcasting on multiple platforms. So if, I, if we don't see you, to recognize you, it's not intentional, but welcome. Thank you all for following. Continue to follow the, the Dakwana show on Dakwana 24 News and Television. So let me try to take this musical break. If I don't receive a call, then I will call it a day. So let me see why I waste your call. Let me take this musical break. I said mine. It's not time for you to say yours. Welcome wherever you are, however you follow it. This is the Dakwana Show, and I'm your one and only. The Indy Father Gable Perspication Dakman. Welcome. 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 If nobody talks about you, you are nobody. Nobody. If nobody chew in your bone, you are nobody. Nobody. They will know everything about you more than you know yourself. No one wants to die. Nobody. 
Begin at tunes like Bill.com. Begin at tunes like Bill.com. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exclusively at tunes like Bill.com. DD12 on the beat. If nobody talks about you, you are nobody. Fret, but I can stay eat fish and cookies together. You from the other side, I on this side we can stay dance together. Let's come together. Let's I'm together. waiting you to put me a call. Let's have a conversation. Let's come together and maintain the peace. That like is all that we have. So we have adjusted the time, our schedule we have adjusted. We will be coming on every every Sunday, as always. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. So we are on the East Coast. We'll be coming on instead of 8, we'll be coming on 5. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you are, if you are in California, then then you can. The time is the we use the, if you are on the, the Pacific Standard Time Zoom. Two PM, two PM Pacific Standard Time. Two PM Pacific Pacific Standard Time is two PM every Sunday. Five PM Eastern Standard Time. 
And for the UTC, that's the Labrador, it's 10 p.m. Yeah, we try to make some adjustments. We try to make some adjustments so that we we'll have folks from Liberia at least to follow. Yeah, if you are other part of the world, you will do the calculation. Yeah, but it's at 8 p.m. Eastern. We will come on at 5 p.m. Eastern. Yes. But now we'll be coming on every Sunday. And beginning next week, or not, no, no, not, not next week, but beginning this week, beginning this week, I will be appearing as panelist on one of the the platform in Liberia. Yeah, we are pairing as a panelist on one of the platforms in Liberia. So that's one of the radio station talk show in Liberia. I'll be a, I'll, I'll be appearing as a panelist, a regular panelist. Yes. All the modalities have been put in place. Hopefully, by tomorrow, as the election draw closer. We have agreed to serve as, as, as a panelist on that platform because the people listening to the traditional radio more than we that do the online. Yeah. Because the people who listen to the traditional radio on the ground, yeah, they, they are the ones that will be voting, but we that do the online, yeah, most of the people that follow all, are not all doing the same the vote, the right of the vote. So I'm interested, I'm interested in talk, also talking to the people on the ground. So uh, I will be one of the panelists on that radio talk show in Adira. Hope for the tomorrow, beginning tomorrow. So watch out for me. I will also still continue to be on the Dark Man show until otherwise other. We are also trying to work around with some other radio stations in the country. So see how best we can broadcast with the Grand Show Live. In all of this, we need your support. We need your assistance. In, your, in any way possible, you can help. That will be good. So that's a good loud music. And they will call it a day because there's no call coming, so. What's the hope for the future? What's the hope for Mama Liberia? All the things that are happening, the wrong things are happening in our country. People lying on each other. People dying mysteriously. People are living in poverty. What is going on with our dear country? I want to say welcome to all of you guys. We are going down the curtains on the Dakwana show. We thought that you guys were going to call him. 
to put your points across based on some of the things that we talk about. But it's like, <laughs> sometimes the high is, it's like you guys said about everything I have said. So none of you guys want to buttress me, none of you guys want to disagree with me, so you guys said about everything I said. That's not a problem. We'll always be excited to be here on the Takana Show, the nation's premium platform. We'll always be excited, no matter what, to discuss the issue. To so have our, our ones and twos. So welcome to all of you. Thank all of you guys that follow the broadcast. Those of you that are still here, those of you that left. But we say thanks to all of you. Those of you that will join within the broadcast after we shall left. Welcome to all of you guys. Thank you all. I well, appreciate you all oh, for the for the for the time. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you all. Thank you all for the time. Yep. Welcome and thanks. We will call it a day. We will call it a day on this edition of the show. Want to appreciate all of you guys that follow. We'll be back again another time. Want to say thanks to all of you guys. God bless you all. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat>